Ruthann and I met last month in Karen McGregor's business mastermind group. She lives in Calgary, Alberta. No, Ruthann I live Meese in a, a sorry. I live in a small town north of Edmonton. Oh, actually. my mistake. Okay. okay. Sorry, where, my mistake there. Sorry, what what's the name of your town? It's a small town called Legal, spelt legal. Don't call it legal. The locals okay. don't like that. My my <laughs> mistake. My apologies. Um, Ruthann Weeks is a cultural change strategist and founder of Harmin Workplace Limited. She is a change agent whose efforts have helped to bring the importance of an abuse-free work environment to the forefront of public awareness. She is a best-selling author and gifted keynote speaker who delivers a powerful message about today's workplace challenges. Welcome, Ruthann, and I'm curious to hear what you'll be speaking about. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Scott. I'm really excited to be here because I love to help raise awareness and um, knowledge around psychological safety. So psychological safety is something that's actually a mandated um, requirement through occupational health and safety in a lot of places, including Alberta. And what psychological safety means is it's creating an organizational culture where it's free and safe and encouraged to express ideas, thoughts, and opinions, to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes, and to report those uh, mistakes and errors and near misses without any fear of reprisal for the simple purpose of not blaming, but learning and creating uh, greater efficiencies and innovation in organizations. It's really exciting stuff. And uh, it's organizations where people can thrive and bring their best selves to work and actually participate in a way uh, that not only fulfills them and makes them a part of the team and a part of a greater purpose and vision, but it, the the organization, these organizations that embrace psychological safety, they uh, they crush their competition because they're innovative and they're at the forefront of um, you know recruitment and retention and all of that kind of good stuff. Good stuff. So, what would you say that most companies neglect around the area of psychological safety? What would be the most neglected area? Uh, there's 13 psychosocial factors that kind of represent industry best practice, uh, including things like um, recognition and reward. You know, a lot of times organizations will just reward all employees, you know, they get the same thing. And, and when you're in a psychologically safe environment where they're really uh, paying attention to this and being strategic about it, they'll ask employees what reward resonates with you. You know, someone might want that thousand dollar bonus at the end of the year. Someone else might rather have three personal days to use throughout the year. Uh, you know, someone else might want uh, vacation credits or something like that but uh, it's really being strategic about that connection connecting with people the way they want to be connected with things like civility and respect you know just basic uh, interactions and interpersonal communications in civility in the workplace if it's not um, you know nipped in the bud right away and it's left to fester it can turn into a bullying scenario if it's repeated over time um, you know things like uh, what else culture I don't really like culture as one of the 13 factors because I think all of the other factors is are contributing to the overall culture of an environment but organizations that don't pay attention to their company culture are really doing not only their business a disservice but all their employees a disservice as well because if you're not strategic about growing your company culture culture will just create itself culture is not about mission vision values or anything that's written on the wall culture is the day-to-day -day way that business is done right and if you're not strategic about it it just develops itself and that can be really risky one of the things i want to share with your viewers is the difference between psychological health and psychological safety psychological health is me doing what i can do and you doing what you can do to remain healthy and strong and well you know we get lots of rest we eat good nutritious food in an unhurried way i found out that when you eat stress stress eating, whether you're eating nutritious food or not, if you're eating in a stressful state, uh, we only absorb 80% of our food nutrients when we do that, or I'm sorry, 20%, 80% gets wasted. Isn't that amazing? Wow. So if you're eating good, nutritious, healthy food, you're only absorbing 20% of that if you're eating in a stressed state. If you're eating junk food, 
imagine what you're getting absolutely nothing to help your body run so yeah it's doing those uh self-care things that's that's psychological health psychological safety is that organizational responsibility that i was uh that i was talking about hmm. and so for for like an employee um that's struggling we'll say with depression um obviously my understanding is psychological safety is more from the organizational perspective. I'm just wondering from the employee's standpoint, like what can they do to embrace psychological safety and really harness that in terms of their mental health, specifically depression? Yeah, well, one of the 13 psychosocial factors is that organizations um, being strategic and um, within working within the legislation. Remember, these are legislated areas in, in a lot of places. Uh, they have a responsibility to support those people in their, um, in their struggles. So uh, first of all, disability, uh, if it's a disability in a diagnosed health condition, that's actually a protected ground under human rights legislation. So organizations and businesses have an obligation to accommodate as much as possible uh, people in those organizations. Industry best practice, uh, when someone is out on stress leave, stress-related leave, or uh, you know, due to a, a health condition, um, they're actually connecting them with coaches to work on a back-to-work plan. And that coach will check in, do regular check-ins with the person that's off and liaise back and forth with HR and work on a back-to-work plan to, to get that person healthy. Uh, industry best practice as far as um, employee assistance programs and benefits packages, they'll actually assign someone within, um, within the provider, the benefits provider to, to connect with that person and make sure that they are, first of all, aware of of everything that's available through the, to them through their EAP and that they're, um, you know, getting to those appointments because you know yourself, sometimes when you're stressed and you're just, you're just not feeling it, you don't even have the energy to make the appointments, let alone go to the appointments. And it's just an extra layer of accountability. So yeah, you know, business and industry is really learning how to embrace mental health and support uh, employees that are experiencing struggle. I mean, it is a workplace. We're all there because we there's a job that needs to be done. And at the end of the day, that job does need to be done, but there's no reason why it can't be done in a way that, um, you know, supports the people that are, that are there. Human capital is the most important asset for any business. It's so true. Yeah, and, and I was curious, like, what's what's uh, an ex like one short example of uh, a a manager or company you know that is amazing with psychological safety? Well, I'm really excited. I just for the first time, you know, like everybody else during this COVID pandemic disruption, I've had to pivot my business and I'm not able to do the live one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, going into organizations and providing training. So I've had to deliver things online. And, and just this week, I was fortunate to finish my beta on my online training course. And I was able to uh, come alongside a health and safety company because it is it's legislated through occupational health and safety. So uh, it's bringing health and safety and HR and management together like never before, uh, but it is a, you know, an OHS legislation. So it falls under health and safety. And I was able to train a, a health and safety company in the Calgary region. There was 11 people there and just really come alongside them. That was CASA Consulting. So now they're well set up to be leaders in that industry. And even though it's been legislated for a couple of years now, since June, 2018, it is those early adopters that are really getting on board. And I think a lot of business and industry, they really want to do the right thing. They want to embrace psychological safety. They want to help support the mental health of their employees, but they're not always sure how. And so that's why I'm so passionate of not only raising awareness, but coming alongside business and industry and giving them a strategy, showing them how to do it in a way that that is, uh, you know, it's comprehensive and it's not going to break the bank. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for being here live today, um, Ruthann. Greatly appreciate it. And for those of you who would like to learn more about who she is, what she does, I did post uh, some links of hers in under the video. And um, she's kindly donated two draw prizes for the draw prize. So yeah, two this copies is mirrored, of... But... 
Yeah, yeah, shadows to light, a whole human approach to, to mental health. It's I'm, a, I'm one of the co-authors. And uh, yeah, sorry, this is a mirrored view, but I'd love to, uh, to get a couple of those out to your viewers. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. So again, thanks so much for being here, Ruth Ann, and uh, create a wonderful rest of your day. Okay, thanks for having me, Scott. Be well, everybody. Happy holidays. Stay safe. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.